Good morning and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> my name is Carla. I'm coming to you from the east coast of the North Island of Aotearoa, New Zealand. And <clears throat> this is my channel where I talk about all the things that I'm making and doing over the month usually. And yeah, you're very, very welcome whether you've been here before or not. So let's get straight back into it. I'm very hot, I'm bothered, I'm actually home from work sick, but I've decided that now that I'm feeling a wee bit better, I'll just um, pick up the camera and get this out of the way because I never seem to find time. <laughs> and oh, there is stuff piled everywhere around me. Um, so yeah, so uh, this is a traditional um, format of a knitting vlog slash podcast and um, I will just show you all the things that I've made, um, things I'm working on, things that I've got, talk a bit about life stuff at the end. Yeah, so here we go. Uh, first up, what I'm wearing is my matcha top. It's the sleeveless version and the design is by So Liberated, which is an indie pattern design company in the States. They do, you would have heard about them. If you sew, you would have heard about them. The fabric is a lovely sheer cotton, um, which I purchased from a lady back in the school Christmas holidays. Um, who is a designer here in Gisborne and she, yeah, she was moving premises for a workshop and, it's the kitten, <laughs> uh, she needed to downsize some of her, her fabric and so she was selling off a whole lot of remnants really cheaply. Um, <clears throat> another finished object is my sparkly my cotton my cotton sequin felix cardigan <laughs> so this is my sparkly goodness and um, hopefully you can see that all right i really really enjoyed knitting this i got the um cotton Kitty, come here. This is Grogu. We got Grogu on the 4th of January and she was nine weeks old and she was about that big. She's grown heaps. She's the runt of the litter. She was half the size of her litter mates. And she's a little mischief. She's named after Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda's name is Grogu. And you're a peace day. You go and see your brother. Goodbye. Yes, yeah, so back to the Felix top. Let's get myself comfy here. I'm sort of sitting in an uncomfortable position on the floor. Um, I had a cone. I can't remember how much was on the cone now. Heaps. And I remember thinking um, that I wanted to make sure that I didn't run out of yarn for the sleeves so once i had done all the body to the you know the length that i wanted and i'd done the neck and the button bands i um i wound everything off the cone because you never know how much the core weighs so i wound everything with my my ball winder and then I weighed that and then I separated that into two equal weights. So that's hand wound. Thinking that I might run out. But I knew this is a summer one. It was only going to go up to my, you know, forearm. Um, so I've actually still got heaps left over. So I'm not sure what I'll do with that. But it's really pretty. So there you go. <laughs> and I purchased it from a lady here who in New Zealand who sells. She imports cones of yarn of various types from manufacturing places and things and sells them off really cheaply so um, I've purchased from her before it's really cool um, so yes I'm, I've got buttons on here 
that I bought from AliExpress. Uh, I purchased from AliExpress. I need a drink. I was, I was going to tell you guys about this. This is so nice. This is a Yorkshire tea and it's a biscuit brew. And it was sent to me from a dairy, uh, dairy, a dairy friend, <laughs> a dear friend. And I'll tell you about that later. All the way from the UK. And I've got it in my lovely Kmart mug. Because, you know, would I be a knitting podcaster if I didn't show you my flesh Kmart mug? But I have to say that I always thought biscuit brew sounded disgusting. It is not. So you get, my throat feels a bit better now. Anyway, I'm hot wearing that. Whew. So what can I tell you about this? I have to try and remember. The buttons are, I think, they're, are they the coconut? No, they're not. They're just like a, a ply MDF type thing with um, a painted picture on them, pattern. <laughs> I've lost my words totally. Um, that I got from AliExpress. But I think they work well with that. The only thing I really bug it up on in this, if you have a look at the placement of the buttons, which denotes the placement of my buttonholes that I did, I wasn't really counting properly and I've ended up with a big gap between the second and third button. But I figure I'm either going to wear it buttoned up to there with the top two undone, or I'm going to wear it buttoned up just with the top two done and that undone. So it's not really a big deal. I'm not fussed. I'm going to get ourselves upset about these things. And I've had a lot, a lot of compliments about this. And I do feel nice when I wear it. I've worn it out a few times. Um, it's quite funny when you hop in the car. You get into the car to go somewhere and the sun's shining on you. You get all these like little sparklies all over the roof of the car. Even said it feels like he's travelling with a disco ball. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so just in case you didn't know, I'm sure you do. Most of us do. The Felix cardigan is designed by Savory Knitting, which is Amy, Amy Christopher's. Um, and it's a very adaptable raglan construction pattern. Um, and I figure that if I'm going to pay for a pattern and I can get away with making different versions of it and getting all the money I can out of that pattern, then I will. So I made another one. Um, so this is my third finished object. This is my mohair one. So what did I do with this? I had purchased, and I've mentioned this on a podcast ages ago. Kittens up at the window up there. A whole lot of um, balls of mohair in a bag um, at the Salvation Army op shop um, in town. And I grabbed it because I was drawn to the colours, even though they're not colours I'd normally wear. I do love colour. Does that make sense? Um, they reminded me of a power shell. Um, they're just gorgeous. So I purchased, and I can't remember how many I had. I think I had, I had three balls that had this colour way in it and I've striped it with the black so the black wasn't part of that so it went from a very dark blue down to a royal blue into a green into a sort of like an aqua turquoise into a forest green and then almost black and yeah and that's sort of how the color would go I decided to break it up with stripes and I won't lie when I got to about here I was thinking what am I doing I, do, I don't like how this looks 
um, I wasn't sure if it was something I'd wear. Um, but anyway, I persevered. When I got to the separation for the sleeves, I actually put the body on hold and I worked the sleeves because I knew that being quite a warm winter garment, I wanted the sleeves to be long sleeve and um, I knew that I could get away with cropping the body or wearing, I wasn't sure how long I wanted that body to sit. So I figured, well, um, let's just, you know, see what we've got, do our yarn management with the sleeves and then whatever's left over I can do with the body. So that's what I did. So I pretty much roughly matched the sleeves, so they're not too bad um, with my colour matching there. And then when I picked up the body again, I introduced some more mohair that I found, which is actually, I think, a better quality mohair. Um, it didn't have tags on it, so I don't know what it is. All of this is quite a, a very retro um, I'd say it's probably from the 80s or 90s. <clears throat> But anyway, this one here is very, very soft and is actually slightly thicker than the other stuff. And there was also this one here with the original lot I bought, but it was a different brand. And this one here, um, the colour changes really quickly. So... That and that striped with the black is what made up this bottom section. Hopefully you can see that the light's starting to drop in here. And yeah, I just sort of winged it really. I um, finished the bind off on the hem with black. I did the button bands in black. I did the neckline with this um, one that changed real quickly and then just did the last row and the bind off with black as well and I feel like that sort of all tied in quite nicely. I just purchased some black buttons from Knop Shop and yeah, there you go. Haven't worn it yet, it's been too warm. That's a really nice big oversized cardigan. With the sleeves, I didn't do any decreases until I got down to the cuff and I did some rapid decreases and then the cuff because I wanted it sort of balloony. Um, yeah. I'm just going to check to see. That's not anyone. I know turning up. Nope. So the rest of this mo here, I'm just going to pop into a big bag that I've got happening I'm going to knit I'm going to crochet my sister a blanket so um, she doesn't know that so if you're my family don't tell her right I've got one more finished object and this is I think and if I'm wrong I will myself on the screen this is the ethel designer's top by style arc and i've used fabric that i also purchased from the designer lady um remnant stash <laughs> so it's a black linen with a white pattern linen panel in the center it's very nice and it's got my trademark tag in it you can't buy this <laughs> um did I put one in this one? I don't think I did in on this one. Sometimes I forget. So yeah, not a lot to say about that. Really simple pattern. Worked out really well. Looks nice. Um, so yeah. Here's that one. <laughs> so I'll put that one there. So yeah, so that that is all my... I better just double check. My... 
the finished objects. Right, so an update on the things I'm working on. So my Be My Baby blanket, which I talked to you about last time, I'm not going to show you today. I have done a few more little looks of that, but I do need to think about um, maybe doing, setting a target of how many to do a night so I can try and at least get all the pieces done quickly. Um, and then worry about the construction, because that's going to be done before June. Um, the next one that I'll show you, because I think I'd start, did I start? I started it last time. So it's a hoe. <laughs> and it's the Athenaeum socks by the beautiful Kelly Menzies of Roro and Cade's fame. And I'm just going to put the hoe part of it on a um, sock blocker. I've knit these in um, I've knit these in yarn that I dyed myself. I keep expecting Evan to come home for work from some reason. So that's the first one done. Hopefully you can see that okay. The, the yarn is a sort of like an aubergine purple and green. Um, yeah, and that's my first one. My second one, I'm just onto the heel flat. Uh, there you go. I'm knitting them with my Addy Crazy Trio needles, which are my favourite sock needles, 2.25 mil. That's the leftovers of the ball. There's another massive tangled mass there because this is the project that Digger stole back in January or December. I think it was in December. And um, annihilated. So, yeah, I've got more stories to tell you about that. Yeah, so that's going well. So hopefully that will definitely be a finished object the next time you see me. Uh, done. Athenaeum socks. Then I cast on, oh no, I won't talk about that yet. Then there was the Bifurca vest, which I um, had cast on the last time I spoke to you. Uh, that's designed by Titi of Titi's Knit Garden. Ow! Oh, God, there's so many people coming to, to and fro from the neighbours. <laughs> and I had decided that I was going to knit it with... I wanted the the pattern to be... Oh, I don't even have the original... I'll have to put it up here because I don't know where. Oh, here it is. That's it there. So I wanted the colour work section to be in um, some of my hand spun. Let's just make sure that I'm recording. Yes, I am. My hand spun wool. And then I actually purchased wool to go with it, which was the dark blue. Which is out there, so I can't even show you. But the contrast, I did the whole colour work section. I did the whole lot of um I did that whole colour work section and I realised that no colour, it's not gonna pop. There was just no contrast between the two colours. So I sat there one lunchtime at work last week and I pulled the whole thing out and the kids were just looking at me in the library. I'm a school librarian for a high school librarian and um, they were mortified that I was ripping all this work out. It's like, no, it's not going to look right. So I came home and I had thought about purchasing some more wool and then I thought, no, I'll just go and have a look in my stash and I found some Utaku DK because you can use Sport or DK for this in the cafe la or just the latte color and i've got two big balls of that so that's over 400 grams 
so plenty for a sleeveless garment and this is what it looks like i'm actually really stoked um so now you can really see I've got about that much more to do of the colour work. Can you see that? Hopefully that is focusing. I can't see. But yeah, I like. That's, that's nice. <laughs> and I'm pleased that I made that decision because, yeah. I mean, it had sat half done for so long anyway because I was trying to do that test knit that didn't happen and we're not even going to talk about um and I wasn't feeling well one weekend and I did all the rest of the colour work and then it was <laughs> just so niggling in my mind I kept thinking let's just wait till you're done and have a look and just see like can I step back and look at it and see whether you can you just could not really see the pattern, so so I'm happy with that. So I'm working away with that. Um, not much more to say about that, I don't think. Yay for Nana's stash! <laughs> Thank you, Nana, saving my bacon. The other one, um, the other wool that I had, I don't know what I'll do with it because I, when I actually got it, I didn't really know whether I liked it because it was a heathered wool, but it had. I sort of thought I was getting more of a just a real plain navy, but it actually has quite a lot of colours in it, and I think that's why, very fine colours. I'll go and get it, and I'll show you. This is the wool here. And I, can you see that halo of all the different colours? And you can see why there was just no contrast between that and the rest. But anyway... I don't know what I'm going to use it for. I'll find something. So yeah, so that was a bit of a fail, but never mind. Um, so that's that one done. Then uh, Kelly, my friend Kelly Menzies was um, taking part in a knit along by hosted by um katie herod of i think she's songbird handmade i'm sure she is yeah songbird handmade she's a friend of hers and i thought yeah those are really cool looking socks so i've decided to um I, I took part in the knit along, sort of, but I had started quite late to the party and it finished in the middle of February. But I knew that um, there'd be something that I'd want to wear in the winter. So these are nest socks and I had dyed up, I'd already dyed up and you guys would have seen it, I think, some DK sock wool. So it's um, 85 merino, 15 nylon. So I dyed some up and I had two balls of this colour. So these are, well, this is <laughs> my nest socks. I haven't got too far. I had two false starts with this. My fault, just not reading the pattern. Um, but anyway, that's as far as I've got with that. Basically what happened was when I first cast on, I um, didn't do the rib. <laughs> I just thought you were just going straight into the half fisherman's rib. <laughs> and then um, realised that my gauge was wrong. It was way too big. And um, I never do I never do a gauge swatch for socks unless the only time I've done it is for a test knit. Because <laughs> I thought I'd better be responsible. Um... But yeah, I I had too many stitches, so I just ended up, I thought, well, actually, I like the fabric, so I just went down a size. Um, started again, that's right, so I started again, um, and then got to a certain point and realised I hadn't put a cuff on it, so there you go. 
I was going to have to rip out anyway. So I probably would have been down here by now with the amount of knitting that I actually had done. I think I've got, I'm, I'm pretty close to doing the heel flap bit, if there's a heel flap. I'm, I'm not actually sure. I think there's a, uh, it's a shadow wrap short row heel, so it won't be a heel flap. Um, and this is a really cool pattern because you can do it in DK or fingering weight yarn. Um, yeah, so I'm enjoying this, but I haven't picked it up for a little bit because I went a bit obsessed with the Felix cardigans. <laughs> but that's all right. Ah. Oh, right, where's my list? Okay, right. I did have one more whip to show you, but this morning we had a bit of a disaster. I been cast this thing on last night and just got the cast on and then started on the rib this morning. Put it down on the coffee table because I was feeling so tired because I've got this bug. Went and lay on the bed with Digger and apparently while I was asleep, he got up and destroyed it. I should have known. I just didn't even think. I just put it down on the coffee table. And yeah. So I woke up and I found stuff. So this is The Daydreamer by Andrea Mowry. And I've had this pattern since August last year. I think I bought it when she had her birthday sale. And then I was watching a podcast that I've just found by a lady called, what's her name? I don't know her name and it's gone straight out of my head. Petra, Petra, Petra. I think she, she's Swedish and her podcast is called Yarns and Yoga and she's lovely. She reminds, she actually looks like my mum. But not obviously my mum when she was older, but just like my mum when my mum was her age. If that makes sense. Right. Um, and hers was beautiful. And I thought, right, I've got to get onto this because I really, really want that top. So I purchased 10 skeins of Possum Merino from Wild Earth Yarns because it's a garment that is um, constructed with mohair held with fingering weight. So this is the possum and merino. And I saw on a Facebook D-Stash page, um, someone was getting rid of some drops, kid silk mohair, and it was in a color. Do you remember the disaster where Digger ate my mohair back? Pardon me. Um, and I managed to rescue most of it, but some of it got wasted. Well, one of those colors was the colour that this lady was selling. So I thought, well, I could put that together with what she's got and I'll have enough to do this garment. So it's a sage green. Where did I put it? Is it? Oh, it's in the bottom, sorry. It's a sage green. It's colour, I think it's like colour 34 or something. What is it on here? Yep. Colour 34. So I had one ball and I got five from this lady for a really good price. So I was like, right, I'll hold that together with um, the possum and it will look beautiful. And it did. It looked really beautiful. So he has, excuse my language. My, my Knit Pro cable, it's one of those nice ones that has the thing. He's eaten my 3.25 millimetre needles. So I came out and the first thing I saw was the ball of mohair spread across the floor, but the rest of the project was gone. So I just went straight out to the front lawn where I know his 
little room of destruction is. And I found this. And then um, I had to go in my nighty and dressing gown and I rescued the ball, which thankfully was not damaged. And oh, when I saw him, oh, he was too scared to come near me. So I've wound up all the bits of the mow here and they can be bits that I will use last if I, can, if I have to. Yeah, I've been so careful with putting my knitting up out of the way. Um, but I just got complacent because I wasn't well. I'm still actually really angry about it. <laughs> I'm really angry about it. So now I've got to see if I can find some 325 millimeter needles because you have to use that for the rib. That cable has had it, like he's he's annihilated it. Look. So that can all just go in the rubbish. Hold up. That's buggered. But I thought I'd show you guys. Um, all I can say is if he had done that with the needle that I'm going to be using for the body, which is in my acquisitions, he might not be alive right now. Oh, I'm so angry. <laughs> but anyway, we'll take a deep breath and I can move on because there's no point. So I don't know, I might cast that back on later on. It's a really, really pretty hem. Yeah, all that work. Lucky I'd only done about four or five rows. But it's a cast on of 163 stitches because it's a, you know, got lots of positive ease. But anyway, let's get back on to um, the rest of the fun stuff. So like I was saying, I've got 10 skeins of this, but I only need five. Um, for this project. So I washed them up because they've come from a mill. They need to be washed before you knit with them um, Unless you're dyeing with them. So I've got those and I purchased a New set of Addy Click needles. This is the Addy Click Nature series and they are made with um, olive wood um, and I purchased this for 150 New Zealand dollars, near new condition, um, full set, near new condition, from another lady, really lovely lady on Facebook. Um, and of course, I've already got the brass ones or the copper ones. Are they copper or brass? I can't remember. They've got the um, a silver coating, but they're copper, I think. Anyway, I um, will be knitting this garment in these. So you can imagine if he'd eaten these, I would have. I, I was nearly crying when I found it because I, I didn't feel well. I don't feel well. And to find that was just. I was just like, you're kidding me, mate. So anyway, so that was bonus. So these retail for over three hundred dollars a set in New Zealand. So and they're quite hard to find. So I thought, cool, yay, because I was getting a bit sick of the knit pros. Because aside from my dog eating them, um, the other day when I was knitting, what was I knitting? What was I knitting on? Um, oh, it was, I was knitting on the Bifurca, and I was just trying to do a, um, an increase, you know, and, um, the needle just snapped. <laughs> so I was like, ah. I want some more wooden needles, but I don't want that. And so, yeah, I found those. So, yeah, that was good. Um, 
Another really cool um, acquisition new to me is this. So this is part of it. So I got this picnic hamper from one of our antique shops. So it wasn't super cheap like it would have been if it was from an op shop. Um, but I thought it'd be a good project basket. And what I've got in here is really cool too. So I've got, let me show you. I was on a hunt for balls of, random balls of wool to make this crochet blanket for my sister. And I found um, this garment that was, someone had started knitting a jersey. And I don't know what happened. But anyway, it was in the op shop in a bag with the needles and all the wool. So I ripped back all their work, skeined it, and then um, washed it and hung it to dry so that would get the crimp out of it. That was what was left before, you know, unknitted. And this is all the stuff, like these heaps. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm not going to use it for the blanket. Can you guess what I'm going to make with it? No? No guesses? I'm just going to make one more of these. <laughs> But I'm going to make it um, slightly more fitting um, and I'll do the sleeve the same as is in the pattern. So more fitting down to the bottom. So I think that would be quite nice. And then whatever's left over, sorry my nose is so itchy from all the fluff in here. Whatever's left over, I will, um, I can chuck in my sister's blanket. But these are... Massive skeins. <laughs> so there you go. I'm just going to throw that all in there. Back in there where they were. There you go. So yeah. So that was a real bargain. I actually got some other wool as well. But it's not here. So we won't worry about that. Um... The next acquisition, you can see why this has taken me a while to do because the thought of it getting all the stuff together to put it here to podcast about. I purchased myself a blending board, a DIY blending board kit and I got it from a company in Australia called Dying For You. I actually didn't realise, I thought it was a New Zealand company somehow, when I'd done, I think because when I'd done Google, I'd done a Google search, I'd done NZ, but anyway, it doesn't matter, it came from Perth and it came really quick, and it was a lot cheaper than buying a blending board from Ashford, like half the price. So the, the kit comes with everything except for the board, so you get your carding cloth, which I'll show you, so there's the carding cloth there. I bought this big chopping board from Briscoe's on sale and I've stapled it, stapled the carding cloth to it. So you get the carding cloth, you get the brush and you get the two pieces of dowel that you would use. And I've had a play. I can't afford a drum carter so I thought well, why not do this. Um, so I've made these roll eggs out of alpaca because I thought it'd be quite cool to see um, how you know what it's like to spin from a roll egg anyway and yeah they look good so I'm going to do more of those and have a spin of those because I'm still working on my alpaca pro project and then later on I can work with having to go with blending um, other materials and, you know, having a good play with that. So I've had a little bit of fun with that. And another thrifted basket. Um, yeah, so that was quite an exciting thing. I had at one point, I had in the post, I had the blending board turning up. I had um, this turning up and I had 
the mohair and the olive wood needles and it was like all these Christmases happening. This is all last week. <laughs> but one thing I did have in the mail that I didn't know I had in the mail was a sneaky present. And when it turned up, I remember going to check the mail and I saw it said something about international and I thought, oh, is this the blending board kit? I was like, that's small. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't the blending board kit. What it was, was this. Um, it had come from the UK. So let me tell you. So my friend Kelly and my friend Angie. So Angie's in Illinois, in the States. And Kelly is in the northeast of England. <laughs> had conspired for a gift. So Angie had asked Kelly to make some stitch markers for me because Kelly also makes stitch markers and she has an Etsy store and there was, where was her card? I thought she had a card in here. Oh there. Well that's her little bag anyway. Um, but if you just look up Roro and Kate's on Etsy, you'll find her, and she does these lovely little beaded stitch markers. So Angie had asked her to do that, so they went together and they basically made a gift together for me. So in this bag, there was the lovely card, which I'm not going to read out, but it's very special and it made me nearly cry. And... I laughed because every time Kelly's podcasting, she has a podcast, and you guys know that because a lot of you came to me from her. She's always drinking this Yorkshire tea, which is a biscuit brew, and the whole every single time she'd say it, I'd feel like retching because I kept thinking about all these biscuit crumbs in the bottom of a cup. <laughs> it's honestly, it's actually really nice. It's a little bit like... Um, you know, when you have Earl Grey, it's got that slight, well, it's quite a strong flavour. It's not as strong as Earl Grey, but, you know, it's just got this slight aromatic flavour. It's nice. So she's got me that. And since then, Angie's found a place in, in the States that she can buy it. So she's bought it and now she's drinking it as well. And... The stitch markers, wait till you see these. This one's big and she said she doesn't expect me to, oh, the progress keepers, sorry. She doesn't expect me to um, put it on a knitting project. I might hang it off this. That'd be quite cool, wouldn't it? But look, it's digger. She made me a digger. And I didn't click at first and then I started to see. <laughs> and then she made me the three chooks. And then because now I have Grogu, she made me Grogu. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> you can take them off their cards now and put them in their little bag. And then, and I haven't opened this yet because I wanted to show you guys first. This is a pocket penguin. Here's a hug while I can't be there. Put me in your pocket and take me everywhere. So how's that for two beautiful friends coming together and making me so lovely? <sighs> so, here you go. I got to show off something nice. <laughs> um, yeah. And that is all the knitting stuff. So I guess I'll just talk about life. Life was pretty good until this happened. <laughs> oh, well. It's like having babies, isn't it? 
Uh, what's up? It's been a busy month. February has been really busy because we started back at work at the end of January. And um, we've had a summer this year, which has been great. But it's been really, really, really hot. Really hot. And at this point in my life, I'm struggling with the hot because I'm already hot. <laughs> Um, so yeah, going back to work was quite good as far as being able to, um, be in air conditioning. <laughs> um, and I've been really enjoying being back at work, so that's good. Uh, what else? Um, so, yeah, so pretty much it's just being home, garden, house, kitten, dog, Evan, Speedway, home, garden, yeah. And um, over on my other channel, my if you're interested in any of my gardening style vlog um, exploits, I do have another channel which I'll link at the bottom, the description bra here. Uh, my February video is going to be so quiet because it's just been so hot, I just haven't really being outside doing a lot of stuff um, and when I have I've forgotten to record but anyway there's been a few changes out there so that's all good um, but yeah it's it's starting to you know it's just winding down to pre-autumn we're in the last weeks of summer and I quite enjoy it because now it's cooling down a little bit at night which means you can go outside and work at night when it's cooled down a little bit and um, whereas you know sort of that December January time it's just the heat is relentless it doesn't matter what time of night it is it's still hot so yeah um, what else has been happening Grogu has grown heaps so like I said, we got her on the 4th of January. She was the runt of the litter. She was tiny. She's now 900 grams. She probably would have only been, I'm going to say she was only about 200 grams. She was tiny. Um, but she's an escape artist and she's too small to go outside. I don't know when I'm going to be able to get her spayed because she's so small. Evan calls her Stumpy. <laughs> Jess calls her Grogy Grogerson. She comes inside and she goes, Hello, Grogy Grogerson, what are you doing? <laughs> She's up on our bed having a sleep now. Uh, so, yeah, that's been a little bit challenging in the winter, actually, because we have got an extra large dog crate, which I'm borrowing from a friend. I'd literally just returned it a few weeks before from having it for digger and um, that's pretty much her house it's got a blanket a little cocoon house food water and then a litter box and um, she goes in there like she was sleeping in there at night um, but last two nights we've just let her out and she's been sleeping with us and she's been fine um, but you can't have any windows open, any doors open, because she climbs and she can jump really high. So the windows can only be open like that much. The doors, well, she'll just go through the doors. So basically, if you want to air the house out, you have to pop her away. And she, what it just calls it, putting her in lockdown. Um, just to get some fresh air in the house. So it's like, let her out for a little while and then put her away, open all the doors up, freshen up the house, shut everything up, let her out. So that's been a bit hard. Um, winter time would have been better for that, but it doesn't matter. At least we had, um, I got her almost a month before I had to go back to work. So we had some time with her so that was good um digger's really good with her they're best mates 
um, yeah, she attacks him. <laughs> and yeah, um, the other thing I've been up to is I purchased this cabinet behind me. So I purchased that in the school holidays and I've restored it and I have done a video which I'll be putting out on me restoring it. But um, at the moment I've just got this door which is a lead light panel door and two of the little panes have broken so I've got it sitting there ready to take to the glass shop to get them to repair it and I just haven't had time to organise that yet. And when that's done and it's all complete I will put together the video and um, show you how I restored this lovely old cabinet. It's beautiful. I'm really enjoying it. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else to tell you guys about. That's about it. Everything's been good. I've been really content, really happy with my life at the moment. Really blessed to have my family and my friends and um, just not going to be thinking about destroyed knitwear. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, aside from this weird bug that I've had, which was basically, I think Monday night before I went to bed, I had sharp pain in my side and I thought it was ovulation cramps. And then I woke up yesterday morning and it had, was on both sides and it was ra radiating around my flanks into my back, but down into here. So I couldn't tell whether it was my uterus, my blood, my kidneys <laughs> or my bowel. And I just felt sick and I slept most of the day and then I woke up this morning and I still felt really off. I wasn't as sore, I don't have the pain in there, but I just felt, ugh. Hence I was asleep when Digger did the bad thing. But there's that many bugs going around, so I've obviously just caught something. I don't know what it is, but yeah, I was hoping for a full term at school without a sick day, but never mind, it is what it is. Anyway, I think I'm just waffling on for the sake of waffling on. This might end up being a long one. Um, so I'm going to now go and put the jug on, make another drink, have something to eat, and clean up all this stuff before Digger gets back in and eats everything again. <laughs> so I wish you all well. Um, hope if I've forgotten something, I'll, I'll try and get back a little bit earlier next time, and I may do... We've got... We've got, a, sorry, I could hear something outside. We've got vlogs, vlogs. We've got school holidays coming up in about six weeks. So I might do a, um, I might do a, a school holiday vlog. So my two weeks off, I might vlog over that time. Um, Cause I've got a few things I wanna do around here, so. Probably get another podcast in before then. <laughs> okay, lovelies. Take care and I will catch you next time. Kakite. <laughs>